The next document we have to discuss, I'm going to talk about very shortly. It is the dogmatic constitution on divine revelation, De Verbum, November 18th, 1965. The fact that it's a dogmatic constitution does not mean it is a dogma. A dogmatic constitution, before it declares to be a dogma, only means to say it is a, it, it is a constitution teaching. It is not a constitution giving practical advice. It is a constitution that is teaching. What makes a dogmatic constitution a dogma is the solemn pronouncements, mostly in the negative form at the end of the document saying, Who, whosoever says that this is not so, let him be accursed outside the church, anathema sit. In number eight, Dave Erbom pronounces a heretical definition of tradition. You can read about this in detail in one of the next issues of the Catholic Family News, because that's what I spoke on in Philadelphia three weeks ago. My whole conference will be published in the Catholic Family News. I'm only saying, I'm only going to say one thing here. According to the will of the, the fathers of the Council, of the Vatican Council, somehow the document, the, 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 the concept of tradition has been changed around. Now, tradition can change. I quoted Leo XIII before saying tradition cannot change, the faith cannot change, dogma cannot change. There is no hierarchy of truth. There is only one and the same truth. I quoted Pius XII saying that the ordinary magisterium is to be obeyed. The ordinary magisterium being only such when, and by, by the way, there's lots of theological manuals from the old days that will say the same that I say, the ordinary the ordinary magisterium, the ordinary teaching of a pope, only being binding, of course, if he does not contradict his predecessors. Here in this council, they dare to change the concept of tradition by saying, tradition knows progress. And the exact quotation is, the tradition that comes from the apostles makes progress in the church with the help of the Holy Spirit. There is a growth in insight into the realities and words that are being passed on. This comes about in various ways. It comes through the contemplation and study of believers who ponder, the, who ponder these things in their hearts. It comes from the intimate sense of spiritual realities which they experience. Thus, as the centuries go by, the church is always advancing towards the plenitude of divine truth until eventually the words of God are fulfilled in her. No. The church is in the possession of the full truth. The church cannot approach. The church cannot come closer. It cannot advance towards the plenitude of divine truth. The church has the divine truth in its fullness. That is a dogma of the Catholic faith. And tradition is not something that changes with the pondering of believers. I don't care about the pondering of believers. And I'm not interested what the religious experiences of Mr. X and Mrs. Y are. They do not change the truth. They do not add anything to tradition. The only way in which tradition can grow is in the sense of the deepening of the understanding. But as St. Vincent of Larens pointed out, quoted by Vatican Council I, St. Vincent of Larens says, there is a deepening in understanding of the truth, but eodem senso, eodem sententia, in the same sense and in the same judgment. You cannot reverse the judgment of 500 years ago through a better understanding or because of a better understanding. You can only deepen the understanding. When in 1854, the 8th of December, Pius IX proclaimed the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, he did not say anything new. He just made sure that now we have precise terminology on what it means.